Okay, well, I think we do something a little educational today. Um, just got done blowing all the plow parts off of that uh, five bottom I took apart because I needed land sides and there was, I needed the land sides and I figured to make a stack bed around the pallet I just took all the parts off so that'll be nice and they're a lot lighter now you can manhandle them before you use forklift but anyway i figured today since mall boarding is for all intents and purposes a dead form of tillage although it's making a comeback um we would talk about the uh parts of the plow or parts of the plow bottom and the terminology of it so the whole thing starts with this guy commonly referred to as a point technically once you get to a three-piece bottom which would be this this and this which we will talk about individually that's known as a three-piece bottom technically on a three-piece bottom that's a share not a point although most commonly you'll hear them call a point um the reason that most people call it a point actually goes back to the horse drawn and sulky plow days where you used to have a two piece bottom. And basically, on that, you would have the point, and this part would be attached to it, and part of your land side, which would come obviously back at an angle, and you know back in here so anyway um like i say back in the days when you had two piece bottoms you had a mall board and you had a point the reason they called it a point was because when you had all three all three pieces as one it obviously formed a point well you take the land side part of it off and you take the shin off you got to share however everybody still calls them points so technically they're shares you're still going to hear them called points and this is actually technical this particular shear is what's known as a rock share it's got a flat bottom on it um the reason being and the reason they call it a rock shear is they're meant for rocky ground and the theory behind it is being flat they're stronger and also being flat if you hit or if you strike a rock in the furrow they'll tend to bounce up and ride up over it um so that's a rock share the uh the second this this is this is a common type of point and then the second most common type of point is what's called a deep suck share which for the most or for the most part is flat through here but then once you get out towards the end it'll curve out and it'll ha it'll have a tongue out on the end and what that's meant for is if you're in a hard plowing where you don't have a lot of rocks or you're in sod or bas basically anything where you're going to have issues with a plow going in the ground you use a deep suck share and that tongue on the end will penetrate the ground first and actually try to pull the plow into the ground so if you buy a plow from an area that's got light soil and you're going to use it in heavy soil and you have issues going in the ground look and see what kind of shares it's got on it because if it's got flat shares you're probably going to have issues with it you're probably going to want to uh, switch to deep suck shares which are like i say gonna have the tongue on it and that other fight the 575 i'm putting together actually has deep suck shares on it they got yeah about that much of a tongue on there these aren't actually radex shares they had can't quite make out the name on there but they don't have an oliver part number um and oliver actually had over a lifetime had two different uh styles of share they had a three bolt share 
which came out on the early radex plows like the model like the plow masters the 214 the 314 all of the rigid beam mostly trailer plows when they came out with the 4240 4340 5440 that all the newer four digit plows they went to a four bolt point which is actually stronger the three bolt points are getting kind of hard to find and the uh you can actually use four bolt shares on a three bolt plow but you have to weld i think it's that hole you got to weld it shut and use that hole that hole that hole if i remember right but when you do that you got to be careful not you should really preheat the point weld it shut and then re-anneal it otherwise so you don't uh weaken the point so there's that and then you come to your shin which goes here above the point and ahead of the mall board and basically this runs the edge of the furrow and uh lifts and starts or lifts and separates the soil away from or your furrow slice away from the furrow wall um these are tend to be a high wear item as as much as your points are these two uh parts tend to have the most soil pressure on them and they wear out faster so you'll probably go through two or th two three four sets of shins and two three four sets of points before you burn through a mall board which is why over time they went away from the two-piece bottom with a point and a mall board and went to shares shins and mall board just because you got all that surface area on the mall board that's still usable but you had to replace the whole point in the shin as one piece when in all reality the point in the shin wear at different rates so you don't necessarily have to change them at the same time so then you go on to the mall board which actually does the work and there over the years has been so people don't realize just how much trial and error and science and math went into designing the mall board as we know it today to reduce draft and increase scouring which when you hear somebody refer to scour on plow parts it's how smooth and shiny they get because the smoother the mall board gets the less draft there is the easier the plow pulls um so a little bit of history obviously you had john deere invented the steel plow problem with the john deere plow was basically all he did was make a steel mall board um there wasn't really any temper to it and they were still prone although they scoured easy because they were steel they were still prone to breaking oliver's claim to fame was james oliver invented the chilled mall board which is basically a tempered mall board which had a really 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 hard wearing surface with a really really soft back that let it spring so that if you struck a rock or an obstruction in the soil the mall board would flex a little bit and the soft or the, the soft backing would let it flex and not break but the very hard surface gave it the wearing capacity so um and then if you go to a radex bottom they actually were let by the time they got to that point in the 40s they were actually layering materials together and if you take a radex bottom and saw it in half although good luck doing it because they're harder than hell um you'll actually see layers of steel on a radex bottom which is what actually i think these are weiss one of the i think only one of these was an oliver bottom and i think the rest of them were weiss uh, 619 yeah that's an actual oliver bottom that's a 619 i'm pretty sure but then a lot of them had the weiss logo stamped in them so they're not a lot of them i think the other four had a weiss logo stamped in them so the mall board is actually the part that does the dirty work and it flips the soil over 
Um, the 619 bottom is the most common Oliver bottom you're going to find because it's, it's the considered their general purpose, general plowing, do everything bottom or uh, mall board. And then you get into specialty mall boards like sod bottoms that are generally squatty and longer and have a really, really aggressive, they'll almost roll over 90 degrees because sod does not like to break apart and sod likes to just stand up on end. Well, if you want to roll it all the way over and expose the roots so that they die, you need a really, really aggressive roll on your bottom. So you use a side bottom. Very few and far between because most guys, if they were breaking ground, bought the side bottoms, used them until they were done done turning side, and then ran uh, general purpose bottoms because they pull easier. And side bottoms are not worth a damn for general plowing because the soil crumbles. Um, then you got the other common type or the other very obvious different bottom. You'll see a slap bottoms, which aren't one piece. They got multiple fingers. They're shaped the same, but they have multiple fingers with the air space in between them. And those are for plowing muck and really sticky clay so that the soil won't stick to them because it's what, it's what we refer to in this area is peat muck, really black, basically peat. You try to plow with one of these, you're gonna unless you go in. The best thing you can do if you're gonna plow something like that with a regular bottom is go find the biggest or the most blow sandiest field you got and just plow the shit out of it and scour the hell out of the mall boards. Because if you go into into a muck field with a mall board looking like this, you're gonna spend more time off the tractor with a shovel scraping the dirt off than you are plowing because it'll just stick right to that mall board. So you got your mall board, your share, your shin, then you got your land side, which will bolt right here, and that basically runs along the fur or the uh, furrow wall and holds the plow straight because you've got your mall board trying to throw all your dirt to the to the uh, right. Your plow's trying to draft really hard to the left, and basically what the land side does is just is uh, back the plow up and keep it from trying to spin sideways in the furrow. Um, and actually, I needed to replace three of these on that other plow, and it just so happened I got lucky, and there was three usable ones that are actually wore about the same as the two good ones on that other plow. And the other good one's already out back. I started on this project two days ago and ran out of torch gas before I got to finish, so... And then these are the mall board supports that I needed that are all messed up on the other plow. Although that one right there, I don't know what was going on with it. I don't think, I think that one's an older, off an older plow because the rest of them are all the heavy ones like these. Which is fine because I had one factory one on that plow and I had one bad one on this plow. So I got enough to do everything I need. So that's all the bottom part. And then this piece right here that everything bolts to is known as a frog. I honestly can't tell you why they call it a frog. That's just what I've always heard it called. And then basically the whole thing is mounted to the beam is what they call everything here. And then it's hard to see because it's so worn out, but this is what's known as a cover board, which takes any dirt that rolls up over top of the mall board and throws it back in the, back down ahead of the soil that's being turned over so that if you got any trash riding up or anything like that, it will throw it in the furrow and get it turned on all the way underneath. Um, They've also been called trash boards, and in the book, they actually refer to them as a mallboard joiner. I've never actually heard them referred to than that, referred to like that, other than in this book. Now, what you can use in place of these because they actually increase draft, they make the plow pull a little harder. It's not really noticeable, but if you're in a situation where you're right on the horsepower limit they make do make a plow pull harder so you got two other options you've got a concave what 
they refer to as a disc joiner. Basically, you take a it's a concave uh, rolling coulter, which will take the first uh, probably four inch slice of soil and throw it over about the middle of the mall board so that there's no trash in that first slice so that you're rolling clean soil up on top. Or the other thing you could do is run a straight coulter with a joiner, which is basically an arm that wraps around with, for all intents and purposes, a mini mall board that's about five inches wide that will throw everything over to the center of your main mall board and do the same thing. So, and obviously they had, that's, a, that's on a spring mounted coulter arm, that's on a rigid mounted coulter arm. And then I can't even believe that they still offered them on to plow this new, but this is actually a chilled coulter yoke without high speed bearings in it. It's just a chilled bearing, which for all intents and purposes is just two cast caps that you put tension on with a bolt and make the coulter ride center. That's old school. That's like 20s, 30s, 40s stuff. I can't believe, I can't, I, I opened the book and saw that and I was like, holy shit. So, and again, that's the rigid mounted coulter arm, which you would use if you didn't have rocks. Spring mounted if you had rocks. Um, unfortunately, they don't have any real pictures of your mall board options in here because I want to say at one time Oliver had over a hundred different mall over a hundred different plow bottom combinations for mall boards, point shins, all that stuff, and they had an entire book about that size dedicated to nothing but mall boards or plow parts basically. And they even went so far as to let's say you had a John Deere or an IH plow and you wanted to convert it to Oliver bottoms. They had parts where you could take a different brand of plow and put an Oliver Frog in mall board and everything on it, convert it all over to Radex, which Radex is what Oliver called their plow part line. Um, after 19, I want to say the Radex line came out in 40 or 41, um, whenever they released the Model 100 Plowmaster. I want to say it's 41 because I want to say they released that the same year they released the 60. Um and then they also had a high speed bottom which they called a speed x um i've never actually looked at a high speed bottom next to a regular bottom to know the to be able to tell the difference i just think a high speed bottom had a little bit more of a curl to it um because the optimal plowing speed is about four to four and a half mile an hour and i think a speed x bottom was designed to plow about five to five and a half mile an hour um and the reason you don't want to go too much faster than that is just like anything else on plow parts heat is the enemy the faster you plow the more friction there's going to be the hotter the point or the hotter the wear parts are going to run the faster they're going to wear which is why you see all these guys that think they're hot shit and they got a really small plow and a really big tractor and they're just hauling ass. All they're doing is burning money, literally burning money because they're just burning their wear parts up when they're plowing that fast. So, I guess I really don't know what else to talk about. Um, oh, there is one other thing that was an option that I, I know Oliver had and I think a, other, a couple other companies offered it is this guy right here it's actually a subsoiler shank that would run in the furrow behind the bottom um to help break up the plow sole which is what you call the layer of dirt left at the bottom of the furrow it's either either here referred to as a plow bottom or a plow sole or a plow pan um basically it's a hard packed layer that'll form after years of mall board plowing so they offered this subsoiler attachment, which actually started back in the 40s after the Dust Bowl and when Oliver came out with what they referred to as their TNT plow. Um, but they pull hard enough that, uh, let's say you got a tractor that's pulling six bottoms. You add this on, you're probably going to be down to pulling four just because it increased the draft so much. So they didn't, uh, didn't really catch on all that much. I've personally never seen these on a plow. 
Oh, it would be cool to find a set just to have. Um, so, yeah. Um, guess I don't really know what else more to talk about. That's pretty much it. Not a whole lot to it. Um, like I say, Marlboro Plying is kind of a thing of the past. There's people that know about it. Um, there's people that think they know how to set up a plow, and then you go to a plow day and you realize they don't really know how to set up a plow. Um, it's actually not hard. It just takes time, and most of the time you can figure it out just by reading the book. And you do it enough times, eventually you just know what to look for. And you can do it by feel and by sight. Um, and mobile plying is actually making a little bit of a comeback because, um, especially like mare's tail, you can effectively control mare's tail with a moldboard plow. What you got to do is you got to go in, plow it, plow it clean. You got to have your plow set up good and plow it clean and bury everything. And then you should no-till it, they say, for four to five years. And that should eliminate the germ and any of the mare's tail seed you got left, in theory. So it's making a comeback for some of the Roundup resistant weeds. Um... It's making enough of a comeback that uh, Salford, which is a tillage tool company, to even took the time and effort to design a brand new high clearance mullboard plow line. Um, and I don't know, four or five, six years ago, the larger semi mounted mullboard plows, the sixes, the sevens, the eights on up, were a dime a dozen. Nobody wanted them. Now you start getting that big. Um, you're going to be paying probably north of 2500 bucks for a nice plow because guys want them again to work a little bit of mallboard plowing into the rotation specifically for weed control now. Um, the Oliver plows are holding their value because most guys will tell you Oliver plow, easiest pulling plow ever built. Um, that was, well... Oliver gave the world the chilled plow. That was their slogan forever. Um, first and foremost, they were a plow maker right up till the very end. And they took a lot of pride in, in the moldboard plows they built. And they took put a lot of time and effort and research into wear parts and alloys and moldboard shapes and plow types and I'm pretty sure that Oliver had more pl more options available for plow frames and bottoms and anything than any other tillage manufacturer ever. They just had pages and pages and pages and adapter kits for other brands, and it was nuts. So, anyway, I guess that's enough rambling. I hope you found this video kind of educational. Just basically talking about it, so... I guess that does it for this one. We'll catch you all on the...